Hello everyone, and welcome to my bold and beautiful channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Brooke agrees to renovate Brooke's bedroom. At the cliff home, Steffi remembered walking in on her husband and Hope. Finn threw his arms around Steffi, excited to spend his free morning with his lovely wife. Steffi, on the other hand, had two meetings in a row, but she needed to confirm certain details concerning Hope before heading to work. Finn said he acknowledged Steffi's feelings and understood that she believed Hope was manipulating him. Steffi stated that Hope had previously used men, specifically Liam and Thomas. Now me, Finn said. Steffi emphasized that the less time he spent with the perplexed Hope, the better. Hope informed Brooke in her cabin that Beth had stayed home from daycare due to the virus. Brooke was there because their conversation about Finn had left her uneasy. Hope stated that she believed Finn was the most amazing man she'd ever known. Steffi didn't appreciate him, and Hope didn't think he was really happy in his marriage. Brooke insisted that Hope could not speak about Finn in that way. It was good Hope had a friend to confide in. But that's all it is, honey. You can't willfully target Steffi's hubby. Hope said she wouldn't because she wasn't a homewrecker. Brooke warned Hope not to allow her heart rule her intellect, fearing that things could spiral out of control without her knowledge. Brooke left. Beth appeared and said she was feeling terrible. Hope volunteered to take Beth to the doctor, but Beth was too sick to go. Hope called Beth's doctor, but he couldn't see her until the following day. Next, Hope called Finn. She recounted Beth's symptoms to him and said that Beth's doctor could not see her that day. Hope inquired whether he believed it could wait or if Beth should go to urgent care. Finn decided to go on his way, but Hope stated he didn't need to. Finn insisted, and Hope assured Beth not to worry since Finn was on the way. Later, Finn arrived with his medical bag. Hope smiled as she observed Finn's nice approach of determining Beth's symptoms as flu-like. Finn gave a shot hoping that vitamins and a moderate steroid would rapidly alleviate the symptoms. He handed Beth a cartoon band-aid and told her to take her medication and rest. Beth gradually improved, and her fever receded. Finn referred to her as a star patient, and made her pinky vow to keep it up. Hope decided it was time for a sleep, and Finn asked if he could airlift Beth into bed. Hope appeared to be moved as he carried Beth out. When Finn returned Hope gave him tea. Hope returned and reported that Beth appeared to be doing well. Hope expressed gratitude for Finn's actions and how you made her feel and how you made her mother feel. It reminded Hope of what a remarkable man he was. Carter and Ridge met in Eric's office to discuss the budget, and Ridge indicated interest in speaking with Hope about her line. Carter claimed Ridge was not acting like a guy who wanted to focus solely on design. Ridge said it was still his intention, but with a very specific condition. He did not want the burden to fall on Steffi. Carter offered to assist, but Ridge had another person in mind. It was someone who had been with the company nearly as long as he had. Brooke. Carter replied. Ridge confirmed it, but said she had turned him down. Ridge said that he asked Brooke before telling Steffi since he knew she wouldn't like it. Ridge had assumed that the women would work through it for the benefit of the company. When Brooke arrived, Carter informed her that he had heard about Ridge's work idea. She hoped Ridge didn't think she had abandoned him in his time of need, and Ridge admitted that he hadn't given up on her yet. Steffi came in and asked Brooke why she was there. Ridge replied that he had phoned Brooke, and Carter inquired whether it had anything to do with their previous conversation. Which was what exactly? Steffi asked. Ridge said that it was about Brooke's impact on the business. He wanted to capitalize on it again. Steffi inquired how. Ridge mentioned the bedroom line and his desire to spotlight Brooke as they had in the past since she could generate buzz like no one else. Steffi questioned how they would emphasize Brooke. Ridge suggested photo shoots and a campaign featuring Brooke front and center. Flipping a sheet off a photo of Brooke on a bed in red lingerie, flanked by models he said, we need to get back to this. Carter and Brooke smiled. Steffi's brow raised. So that's what you've been thinking about at work, Brooke replied. Ridge acknowledged it, but said it was about her. Brooke told Ridge that she had been a grandma for a long time. You're not like any grandmother I know, Carter joked, and Ridge advised his pal to take it easy. Ridge agreed with Carter, describing Brooke as timeless and ageless. He believed she was more provocative and alluring than when they first met. 
he decided it was time for her to emerge out of the shadows and onto the runway, giving the audience what they wanted. He asked Brooke to make the bedroom line her own again. Brooke wanted to but she said she was too old. Rich called it silly and stated if no one was in the room, he'd show her how sexy she was. He urged that they highlight the line, and she was the best candidate for the job. He instructed Carter to turn on the lights, so he could show Brooke a highlight reel from her time at the company. Steffi rolled her eyes as a photo display accompanied by suggestive music played. Rich claimed Brooke brought magic to the line and had everyone's attention. He mentioned that Brooke had just found her stride and had more to give the firm and the world. Brooke had several questions about how it would operate. But yes, I will do it. Steffi appeared nauseous. After Carter and Rich had left, Steffi asked Brooke if she needed to go anywhere. Brooke assumed Steffi wanted Brooke to go on her way. Brooke mentioned that Steffi wasn't happy with the Brooke's bedroom proposal. Steffi admitted that she wasn't, but maintained she could still make the best decisions for the organization. Brooke remarked that Steffi's HFTF decision had not been for the best. Steffi responded that she was less concerned about Hope's line than she was about Hope herself, particularly the time Hope spent with Finn. Hope cornered Steffi's warning, Brooke's advice, and Poppy's claim. The bold and the beautiful recap on Wednesday, June 12, Brooke Logan, Catherine Kelly Lang, wants to know if Hope Logan Annika Noel has feelings for John Finn Finnegan, Tanner Novlin. Bold and the beautiful recap highlights. Steffi Forrester, Jacqueline McInnes Wood, warns Finn to stay away from Hope. Steffi has far more experience with Hope than Finn does. Poppy Nozawa, Romy Park, asks Katie Logan, Heather Tom, to give her and Luna Nozawa, Lisa Yamada, her blessing. Liam Spencer is thrilled for Bill Spencer. Liam Spencer, Scott Clifton, wants to know how Bill Spencer, Don Diamant, is feeling right now. Bill stated that when he initially saw the findings, he was speechless. Bill recalls giving the results to Luna and how excited she and Poppy were. Liam describes a life-changing moment. Bill says this is quite exciting. Bill always adored all of his children. Liam reveals that Bill has a daughter. Bill says, and you have a sister. Liam thinks about it for a moment. Liam is genuinely pleased for Bill. Bill claims he and Poppy are stuck in time. Bill claims that Poppy not only gave him memories, but also a daughter. Liam inquired whether Bill had spoken to Katie about Poppy. Bill hasn't spoken to Katie yet. Poppy Nozawa stakes her claim. Katie claims she and Bill have not had a chance to discuss this. Katie believes this is important news, and it also affects her children. Luna thinks this is also a major change for her. Luna knows it will be awkward at first, but she can't wait to meet her brothers. Trending. BMB spoilers. Is Hope's kissing Finn justified? Or is she a sinner like her mother, Brooke? Katie informs Poppy she has a beautiful daughter. Poppy thanks Katie and says she'll inform Bill that she came by. Katie wonders whether she's telling her to leave. Poppy would never ask Katie to leave. Poppy claims they are now family. Poppy has a lot to accomplish and wants to give the house a feminine touch. Poppy claims Bill can't wait to be alone with her and Luna. Poppy is eager to make up for lost time with Bill and their daughter. Katie believes she needs to talk to Bill first. Brooke Logan questions Hope Logan. Brooke urges Hope to respond. Hope acknowledges that she has feelings for Finn. Hope claims that Finn has been assisting her lately. Hope has been seeing Finn. Brooke misunderstands and Hope clarifies. Brooke asks whether Hope is ill. Hope claims Finn has been treating her migraines. Finn has healing hands. Brooke informs Hope that she cannot do this. Trending. The bold and the beautiful spoilers. Bill's fast tracks Luna Liam is furious and upset at Spencer Publications. The bold and the beautiful recap. Steffi Forrester warns John Finnegan. Steffi talks about Hope losing Liam, then Thomas Forrester, Matthew Atkinson, and Douglas Forrester, Henry Joseph Samory. Finn says Hope has recently opened out to him. Finn claims this began long before Steffi and Hope were born. Finn inquires about Kelly Spencer, Sophia Paras McKinley, and Beth Spencer, Jordan Linariza. Steffi adds, No, that cannot happen. Finn explains how easy it may be. Finn assures Steffi that she doesn't need to worry about Hope.